Hey, if you're looking to launch or grow an auto repair shop and you've gone maybe to the bank or to a potential investor and they have asked you for a set of financial projections and you're kind of caught like a, a deer in the headlights wondering how in the world do I create a set of financial projections, but that's the thing that's blocking you, standing in your way between you and, and that uh, business loan or a potential investment, well, you've come to the right place because we have built a financial projection template built specifically for auto repair shops. Uh, my name is Adam Hooksema. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last decade, we've helped thousands of entrepreneurs create financial projections for their business. And so today I'm going to walk you through our auto repair shop financial projection template. And the first thing I'm going to show you here is really um, looking at this with the end in mind. So what you can see here is uh, our at a glance tab. And what you're going to see is a number of um, tables and charts and graphs that are going to be useful for you once you've created your projection. So this might be what you want to throw into your business plan or what your banker might want to see. You've got your profit and loss at a glance, some different summary um, data, nice graphs, charts, uh, use of startup funds, a break even graph. Um, a lot of details that uh, a banker or investor might want to see. And then we have the uh, projected income statement, uh, cash flow statement, and balance sheet for five years uh, annualized. But then we also have those same financial statements, income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet in a monthly format here as well. So that's really what we're going to get to, but we have a little work to do to get there in the first place. And so that's what I'm going to do is walk you through how this template works. Um, so the first thing that you need to know is that every cell that's highlighted in blue is, this, is an assumption that you can change without breaking the template. So, um, you know, you can put your company name in here, you can put your start date. Now here we're looking for uh, you to enter your projected investment. Um, so that could be your personal investment that you're put, putting in. If you're going to the bank to get a loan, they're probably going to ask you, you know, what are you putting in as a down payment? So you may have to put some money in yourself. You may also have other investors and you could add those in here as well. Um, you can add in your starting inventory. Um, I'm going to jump down to this table. This is our fixed asset table where you can enter in um, things like your building. So let's say you're leasing your space, uh, but when you lease the new space, you're going to have to do some renovations. We call that, you know, real estate improvements or building improvements. So let's say that's a $60,000 cost. <clears throat> then you want to enter in the different equipment that you're going to need to purchase. So maybe a lift, uh, some tools, uh, diagnostic equipment, uh, and then probably some furniture for people to to, to sit in while they're waiting. Um, and so you can see these these numbers here. And, and you know, really these numbers can vary widely, uh, incredibly uh, widely, depending on what kind of size and scope of, of auto repair shop you're looking to start. And so you need to do your own research here, figure out what's going to cost for your specific concept, and then enter those numbers in here but we've tried to put in some example data. And then um, let's say you're gonna try to get an SBA loan. And so we've entered in an SBA loan for $200,000 uh, at an 8% interest rate over 10 years. And um, next thing we're gonna do is jump over to our input revenue tab. Make this a little bigger here for you. So, the way we think about revenue is we, we, we start with customers. We want to understand how, how are you going to get a customer? Um, are those customers going to keep coming back to you and that sort of thing? And, and then how much do those customers spend on a, on a regular basis? And so what we're saying here is that we've got 250 current active regular customers. So let's say that we're kind of starting out of the gate with 250 um, active customers. And we're saying that uh, we think the shop can only handle a thousand customers, regular customers. Um, maybe it's a it's a small shop, and so on average, you know, maybe those thousand regular customers are going to come uh, maybe four times a year, three times a year, that sort of thing. And so you kind of we can do the math and we figure out that's the capacity that that we think we can handle in our shop. So you want to put in what what capacity of regular customers you think you can handle. Now uh, we'll have an advertising budget. So probably you may do some mailers, um, 
you know, coupons in the mail for breaks or oil change, that sort of thing to get customers in. And so we estimate what is the cost to uh, acquire a new customer. And then um, ultimately down here, it's going to say, okay, we're going to get, if we spend $500 and it costs us $50 to acquire a new customer, we're going to get 10 new customers from paid ads uh, in, in the first month here. And then we also have the ability to add in word of mouth customers. So you probably get, you know, if you do a good work, people will talk, who's your mechanic, you know, and, and, um, and send business your way. And so that's what we have here. And now here we say, what percentage of new customers will become regulars? So say so you send a coupon in the mail for a new set of tires, new customer comes in to take advantage of those. Now, what percentage of those customers are going to then come back for uh, their brake work or when they need an oil change or, you know, what percentage of them are going to become your regulars? That's what we're looking for here. So we're saying uh, we kind of hit the steady state of new customers, 20% of new customers become regulars. And these are just assumptions that we've we've put in here by default, but of course, um, a lot of this depends on your, your particular model. Uh, and so you'll need to think through this on your own. Um, but ultimately, you're going to get your total active regular customers down here. Now, here we're saying how many times per year does the average active customer visit? We're saying two and a half times um, on average. And then we're able to calculate your total customer visits per month based on that. We know we can put in how many days you're open. And then you can put in some different categories of services that you provide. And then really here you put in your specific service items. Pick a category, you can see from the drop down menu. So let's say if you wanted to change the categories, you could change the categories up here. And then that would change what categories show up here in the drop down menu. Then you have to put in the average price for those different um, those different services, your cost for parts and supplies, and then the average length in service hours. How long do you expect it to take um, to complete that? And then what percentage of customer visits? So up here, remember, we're calculating. You've got 85 customer visits. So what percentage of those 85? are going to be for each of these different types of services. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, if you look at this right here, if I add this, and you can see down here, right here, it says sum is 200%. So what that means is that, um, that on average, uh, a customer is going to get two services done. Uh, so this adds up to more than 100%. Now, if you said each customer visit only gets one service, you only do one thing for them, then um, what you'd want to do is make sure that these percentages only add up to no more than 100%, right? Um, right now, we have them adding up to 200% because we're kind of assuming that you'll, you might upsell. So you might provide brake service, but while you're at it, you um, rotate the tires, that sort of thing. And so... Uh, keep that in mind. All right, so based on those assumptions, we're going to come up with our average spend per customer visit. Now, this isn't something that you need to, this is calculated for you, so you don't need to change this. This is all calculated based on what we entered up, up above. And then we have the ability to add an increase in annual prices as well as increase for supplies and materials. And once you do that, you've got your projected uh, income and you've got that broken down by category as well. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is jump into operating expenses. So you'll see here a table uh, with different uh, typical operating expense line items. And the thing that I want to point out here is that you can enter these in as a fixed dollar amount or a percentage of total revenue. 
um, or even a percentage of your different revenue categories. But I'm going to give you this example. So let's say this transaction fee, this is uh, like your credit card processing fees. So we're saying um, on average 3%, we've got 3% uh, fee that the credit card company processing company charges. Um, and so you may have a different rate negotiated with your uh, credit card company, but uh, that's that's what you're able to put in here. And so if you put in 3%, put that in as 0 0.03, that will um, make that show up as a, as a percentage. Now, if you pick fixed, these are fixed dollar amounts. So that, that's where you want to put in the full dollar amount. So, uh, you know, for accounting, let's say you spend $100 a month. For rent, you're spending $3,000 a month um, and so on. So you can see how, how you can enter those things. You'll want to do research. Again, we're not saying that rent should typically be $3,000 a month. Um, that may be for a very small garage. You're able to get rent for, for $3,000 a month, you know. Obviously, some garages and depends on where you're located could be, uh, you know, significantly more than that uh, per month. So, uh, do your own research and make sure you you fill in these assumptions accordingly. And then here on the input salary and owner draw tab, you can see um, the ability to add in job uh, positions. You can add specific positions, what kind of category of labor they are: are they direct labor, um, or are they general and admin. And then how many hours per week they work, an average annual or an annual salary for the position. You've got your employer taxes and benefits. And then here you can see that you can pick which month they're gonna start on. So if you say they're gonna start in month one, they're starting right at the beginning of the projections. But here for the second mechanic, mechanic number two, we're saying, well, we're gonna grow into that. So over time as the business grows, we're gonna add a second mechanic in year two to be able to handle you know, the customer base, the growing customer base. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, that should be actually is year, I guess 125 would be the first month of year three, actually, um, that we're starting here. So, so yeah, you can fill all of that out. You put month 60, that's just uh, the end of the five-year projection. So if you don't plan to uh, fire these folks, then just put 60 in there and that will um, add their salaries throughout the rest of the projection. And then you can put in the number of that particular employee that you have. And so if you had, um, if you hired, you know, uh, two service techs at once, you could put two in here and that would add two of those at once. All right, and so that is really it. That brings us all the way back to where we started back at the profit and loss at a glance. And you can see just based on the numbers that we put in here, kind of zoom in here for you. You can see that you have a small um, $54,000 net loss in the first year, uh, but then you start to reach profitability and, um, and you can see the top line growing, um, getting close up to that 700,000 level by year five with a, with a nice 18% uh, EBITDA, 13% um, net income, um, which seems uh, reasonable for for a auto repair shop in terms of a net income percentage. So obviously, again, depending on the size of your shop, you could have much more revenue than that, um, or less revenue if it's a if it's a small shop. So um, if you have any questions, uh, please. Uh, ask us in the comments and we will we'll keep an eye on those comments in the YouTube uh, video comment section and be happy to reply to you that way. Uh, also, you can reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. And if you want to uh, get your hands on this particular template that we've been using today, uh, we'll link to the template down in the description of the video below. All right. Thank you very much.